Hi, I'm Alicia and welcome to the Minte Papers YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing a special album that I made with the Minte Papers Precious Moment Collection. There is a little bit of a story behind the album. This is my husband's family. For his parents' 70th birthdays, we had a photo shoot, a family photo shoot, and the following year I wanted to put those into an album to give to them for their 50th wedding anniversary. So I'm going to take you step by step through how I created the album. The Minte Precious Moment papers are stunning for special occasion photographs. So let's take a look at how I created the album step by step. I started with a, a binder that I bought that you can buy from the supermarket or um, Big W, Kmart and I took out the silver little lever archer um, so that I just have the cardboard binder that I can use to start my album with. I then used this soft fleece fabric um, to, to give the album a little bit of softness and I purchased this material at Spotlight. So I just popped the lever arch binder on top of the white fabric and I'm just cutting around the edges so that I've got a nice piece of fabric that's going to measure my binder quite well. And this will just give it a little bit of a soft feel. I'm just using some glue to, um, to put all over the binder which will hold the white fabric down snugly onto the binder. I'm putting some glue on the base. And then I'm putting some glue on the front cover. Once I've got that stuck down securely, I'm just going to trim the edges as it was finding I was finding it a little bit tricky to get an accurate cut around the edges so when it wasn't glued down. So this is a DIY way of making an album for very little money. I think this binder costs, I don't know, you can pick them up for two or three dollars, sometimes four or five dollars. Um, I have heard of people using spray adhesives, which I would like to try on my next album because I find that it's hard to get a really even coverage with with this glue. So next time that I make an album I'm going to try a spray adhesive just so I don't get any wrinkles in my fabric. Every time I make one of these albums I learn a little bit more and I am learning that even though this glue is very soft um, and it doesn't dry hard, it doesn't give as good a coverage as I think a spray adhesive would do. So that will be my change for the next time I create this album. So I'm just smoothing that down so that all the glue is adhering and there's no bumps and lumps. Then I just repeat that process by adding glue to the spine of the album and smoothing it down and then adding glue to the back of the album and smoothing it down. Now I'm going to cover the album just as I would cover a book with contact. I'm just, you just have to be a little bit careful there with the, with the folds. Sometimes you can make a little snip in the fabric which just gives you a better 
need a finish I guess is what I'm looking for I need a finish there with the the folds and then for the corners you want to do it as neatly as you can so that you've got a nice clean finish with your corners and just folding those down into a triangle and then gluing everything down we will cover up this inside so you won't see the actual inside here's the beautiful mente papers I absolutely adore this collection. I love the colours. I actually asked the family members to dress in a colour scheme for the photos so that they would match these papers. So I chose, um, I asked them to dress in any shade of blue or purple because purple was my mother-in-law's favourite colour. Um, like a fawn or a cream sort of a, a navy would be fine a black would be fine so we all did coordinate our clothes <laughs> so that we I could use these papers to scrap these photos so it was all quite planned because when I saw these papers I just felt that they were perfect for a special celebration such as a special birthday or an anniversary they are also would be beautiful in a, as a wedding to scrap wedding photos but they're very soft and natural colors with just a hint of blue so I'm just going to pop this page here on the inside of the album so this will cover up the inside perfectly and we won't see any of the material I'm just creasing the edge here because this paper will need to fold over this little bump in the binder so I'm just sort of helping the paper showing it where to fold with my bone tool so that it, it's getting the idea of where it needs to fold and crease so I'm sort of training it to match the binder you do need to sort of help the paper fold where it where you want it to fold otherwise it will sort of buckle where you don't want it to The next step is to cut a piece of the paper the same at 12 by 9 and a half inches. This is the piece for the spine board. We're going to score at one and a half inches, one and three quarters, two inches, two and a half inches, three inches, three and a half inches, four inches, four and a half, five, five and a half, six six and a half seven seven and a half seven and three quarters eight inches and nine and a half inches we need to fold this now We are going to create mountains. You will have a mountain and a valley. Each mountain will be what we glue our pages onto. So you're going to have four mountains for our pages because we'll have eight, eight pages in this album. We're also going to have a little section just to get us over that little bump in the binder. So we have our tiny little bump, we have our four mountains and then we have another tiny little bump. We're just going to trim that little bit off there, we don't actually need that bit, that's an extra bit. 
We're now going to glue those mountains together. As we glue each of those mountains together, we will create a nice flat back. And this will glue smoothly down into the spine of our album. And on the other side, we have our mountains sitting up nice and straight and tall. That will be perfect for adding our photo pages onto. So now we're going to glue that whole section into the binder. So I'm putting glue on each section. And then I just need to smooth that out and apply some pressure so that the paper is happy inside the, the album. We're going to leave that to dry for a little bit and we're going to take our photos. Now I asked my mother-in-law to choose 30 photos. I think we had 300 something taken, but I wanted her to pick her, th her top 30. I'm going to be using the frames that I've already fussy cut from the number six paper in the Precious Moment collection. The photographs that were taken by the photographer had a large background, very large background, and the people were quite small in the photos as you can see here. This actually worked to my advantage for creating this album. It meant that I could fit a lot of photos on one page, and it also meant that they fitted quite nicely into the frames. So my next job was to find frames that suited each of the photographs. Then I would glue the frames onto the photograph. And then I would cut around the frame. This allowed me to use a lot of photographs on each page of the album. I also used the Mente frame book because some photos were just a little bit too big to fit into the frames from the number six paper. And I didn't want to squish them all into tiny frames if it didn't suit. So for the bigger photographs, I used larger frames from the Minte frame book. I fussy cut the frames in advance so that I could easily use them without having to cut. Once I had all of my photos ready, I placed my eight layouts onto a bed and I sorted the photos into which layout they would go on. So you can see from this picture that each layout had roughly three to four photographs on it. And I had to do this in a on a large space. I couldn't do this at my table because my table doesn't fit that many scrapbooking papers laid out. So I had to move, move it all to the spare bedroom where I could lay out all of my pages. So there was eight pages plus there was the middle, the beginning of the front and the back of the front cover. So there's actually 10 layouts all together. So there was 10 pages laid out on the bed and then I could spread those photographs between those 10 layouts. I added recycled cardboard to the back of every photograph so that each photo was ready to be glued onto the layout. I now had every page planned for the album and so now it was just a matter of taking each page one at a time and constructing the layout. This was the first page that I created. I actually had to reduce my pages down a tiny bit to fit perfectly into the binder. For each page I took off half an inch on each side of the layout. 
I had already planned the position of my photos for each layout. I've also fussy cut lots and lots of elements from the Mente Precious Moment collection so that I would have some elements that I could use to decorate my layouts. For this layout I was creating a cluster of embellishments underneath the oval framed photograph and then I had the two wooden frames on a diagonal. I used some cheesecloth cheese um, underneath those fussy cut floral clusters and then I glued that oval frame on top. I added some beautiful lace to go along the bottom of the top photo and along the top of the bottom photo. I added a sticker sentiment from the Mente Precious Moment cardboard sticker sheet. Then I embellished with some flat back pearls. And then I added some extra lace underneath the paper layers. Moving on to the second layout now, this was a three photograph layout going in a diagonal line. I trimmed half an inch off either side of the paper that I chose to use. I played around with the photos for this one and I actually switched out one of the photos and changed it. So I ended up using three photos that were different in size. I looked for fussy cut elements that I could layer underneath my photographs. I glued down the larger photographs first, then I found some cheesecloth and some white crinkled ribbon. Then I began to glue down some fussy cut elements and the cheesecloth underneath my middle photograph. just positioned those where they looked best just poking out from the, the layers of the photograph moving on now to the third layout this layout had five photos on it which was a lot of photos but because the photos are so small it was quite easy to fit that many onto a page I had already decided on the layout of the photographs so all I needed to choose was the fussy cutting images that I was going to use in order to decorate. I glued the photographs down first and then I glued down my fussy cut floral clusters onto the tops of the photos. I included a sentiment from the cardboard sticker sheet with some cheesecloth. I added in some lace for extra embellishment. Moving on to our next layout now. This layout was again three photographs. I already knew the position that I wanted the photographs to be in and I trimmed down my paper so I just glued my photographs straight onto the paper. This album actually was quite simple to put together. The focus is on the photographs with embellishment 
to enhance the, the page, but it's not a lot of embellishment in each of these layouts. It's just subtle embellishments. I'm just adding in some floral clusters underneath the top photograph and some lace for extra decoration. Once I was happy with all of the extra layers of lace and papers, I glued that top photograph down and then I also found a cardboard sticker sheet sentiment that I can add to this layout. And I found a crinkled ribbon bow <clears throat> that I also added. There's my sentiment and the layout is complete. Moving on to the next layout now. This has got four photographs in it. It starts with this beautiful page that I love, this paper. It's a big embroidery hoop. Um, it sort of reminds me of a dream catcher. So I use this page a lot in this album. I think I use this four times because it was one of my favorite pages. These are the photos that I'd chosen for this page. I went about making a big cluster of embellishments in the middle of the four photographs. And these, the images um, from the Precious Moment collection are just perfect for creating beautiful, shabby chic floral clusters, this beautiful flowers and elements that you can put in together. Really enjoyed creating these layouts. They came together very easily. Moving on to the next layout now. This one consisted of three photos, two in the oval shaped frame and one in the silver rectangular frame. Again, I just began by trimming off the barcode strip and trimming half an inch off each side of the paper. Once my photos were in position, I went about adding in my fussy cut layers and some lace underneath the photographs. I just repeated this process for every layout in this album so that everything looked the same across the whole album. cloth added in for just a bit of extra different texture. Let's glue that all down now. Glue in all the different layers. I'm just working my way around the photo, going down this side of the photo. And moving on now to the next layout. Again, this was another one of the embroidery hoops, but this time I cut it out because it's going to be on the inside of, I think this is the back cover. Um, and so I've already got paper in the album for that. So I fussy cut out the whole embroidery hoop so that you, I will still see the background of the paper that I've already chosen. 
just following the same principle of lace and floral clusters popping out from below the photographs and one on the top floor love the white crinkled bows they look so pretty gives it that shabby chic vintage feel adding on one of the little lanterns the lanterns are really cute in this collection some pearls Gluing on the bow there. Moving on to the next layout now, another one of those embroidery hoops. Got two photos this time. I actually used the swing in this one, which is one of the beautiful elements from the fussy cutting sheet. So I pop that swing in now. This page was a picture of all the grandchildren. Adding in all the flower clusters and the lace and the cheesecloth. Putting on a sentiment, a bit of cheesecloth to soften it, some pearls. is another one of the ones that have been cut out so it's going to be going on the back or the front cover I think this one's the front cover all right so we're back to the album now I'm just going to be gluing down those little flaps that I didn't glue down before and I'm going to add some lace to hide the join in the papers just making sure that's nice and straight some more lace to hide that join and these um, embroidery hoops that I had already fussy cut I'm actually going to use them on the inside I'm going to add some ribbon I forgot to add the ribbon before so I'm just going to add it underneath these embroidery hoop I'm just taping that in to make sure that it's really secure and it's not going to come out. So I've glued it and taped it in. Just going to glue that straight onto the page. Adding the tape in on uh, the ribbon in onto the other side. So I'm actually using two ribbon, one the crinkly white ribbon and one a strip of torn silk material. There's the other fussy cut embroidery hoop so I can glue that straight onto that page now and so that is the inside layers of the album complete and now it's time to glue on the pages this takes a little bit of patience because you have to be wait patiently while the glue dries which is can be challenging because if you move it too quickly you won't get a nice strong finish and we're just going to glue another page onto the back just have to make sure that you're lining up your pages so that they're you know completely in alignment especially over the corners 
putting in the next page now, putting glue on the little mountain that we created. So you can see that the mountains are going to go in between the two pages and you don't see them at all. More glue. Obviously you want to make it, you want to have made your decisions about what order you would like your pages to go in because once you've glued those pages into the album you can't change that order. To the next page, now just being patient while the glue sets. Next page in. Really finished now. The front cover, I chose this windmill photograph and the sentiment from this cardboard sticker sheet that says our memories. Underneath the brown wooden frame, I added floral clusters. This was an easy way to soften the photograph. I cut all of these from one of the 12 by 12 sheets prior to making the album so that I had everything there ready to go. Just measuring to make sure that that photo is center, in the center of the front cover. Let's take a look at the album now so you can see what it really does look like inside. It's the inside front cover and the first page. It's the next two pages. The next two pages. The next two pages. And then the last page and the inside of the back cover. I was really happy with how this album turned out. It was really fun to create. The papers are amazing. You can see how the material gets a little bit wrinkled when you open it, which is why I want to swap to using the spray adhesive for my next album that I make from scratch. And then I can tie that up there with the bow. That is my completed album. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see your take on an album of the Precious Moment collection or one of the other Minte collections. Please let me know in the comment section below whether you like this tutorial. And please make sure you subscribe to the Minte YouTube channel for a new video every Sunday. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely crafty day.